days, people who are committed to God oftentimes become discouraged. And it seems as if they are blossoming, yeah. prospering, yeah. blowing up. Mm -hmm. And you look at your set off and you say, Lord, I'm trying to live right, do right, think right, walk right, talk right, mm -hmm. all of this right stuff. And it doesn't seem to be playing, paying dividends. Mm -hmm. But those who are doing what the devil would instruct them to do are the ones who are advancing in this life. Yeah. Yeah, but if it were in this life only that yeah, we yeah. have hope, then we'd be as all men most miserable. So uh, Paul writes that. So we thank God that we have hope beyond this life. Yeah. But in this life itself, uh, when Jesus had the encounter with the young rich man and the young rich man encountered Jesus and said, good master, what must I do to gain eternal life? And Jesus gave him the commandments and he said, I've done, kept all those from my youth up. Good fellow. He said, well, one thing that I lack is, he said, sell all you have and give to the poor. Now, most often that scripture is misunderstood because people interpret sell all you have and give to the poor, interpret it as become poor, um, or give all you have away. No. First thing, instruction, is to sell all you have. If you don't divest in this world, then all your cares will be in the things of this world. Remember when Jesus said you're not fit to look to, you're not fit for the kingdom? Because yeah. you look back, one had to go prove some land, one had to go get married, do this and do that. Let the other one had to go bury the dead daddy. And Jesus straightened all that out. So now you look back, you're not fit man. for the kingdom. That's right. Uh, so the young man, Jesus told him, sell all you have and give to the poor. Divest in this world and look for opportunity to be a blessing. Give to the poor. He didn't say give it all away. To give to the poor. Yeah. So as you encounter people who are in need, you come to their assistance. Yeah. Uh, but he couldn't deal with that, so he walked away. He found the Bible says he found the same hard. Well, his interest was in his flesh, and so he couldn't divest in his world. He couldn't yeah. sell all that he had. Uh, but the Bible says the love of money is the root of all wow. evil. So yeah. when you put your money above Christ mm -hmm. and you love your money, or do you love Jesus? Right. So the love of your money is the root of all evil. Uh, so when you look at folks, don't you know when you commit yourself to one thing, if you are hard enough at it, you'll be you're more prone to be successful at it. Mm -hmm. If you went, if you woke up every day with the mindset of, I'm going to make all the money I can and save all I can, you're going you're gonna to accumulate some stuff. Man, I'm not wasting, I'm not wasting a penny. And I'm going to work three, four jobs. You're going you're gonna to accumulate some stuff. It's just the way it is. You know, I don't need a car. I can, I can walk to work. I'll get a bicycle. I'll get a moped, whatever. You do things to keep the saved money. Right. You do things to make money. And guess what? Uh, down the road, you'll see you have a few dollars saved up. Now, how that benefits you, you'll find out ultimately. But if you put your mind to it, when you go to school, if James puts his mind to doing his work in school, he will then perform at an excellent level. But if he doesn't put his mind to his work, he will only struggle. Yeah. Amen. If someone has an ambition to play football, basketball, baseball, to swim, to play tennis, soccer, whatever the case may be, if they really commit themselves to it, if they if they have any athletic ability, they commit themselves to it, be a pretty fair play. That doesn't mean they're going to go to the pros, but they could be a, a, a pretty a fair athlete. So what you put your mind to, uh, if you're serious about it, you know when you had your mind on sin, put your mind to it. Come on, come on. And you sin, yeah. and you enjoyed it. You, you, you look for opportunities. Yeah. Okay, I don't need anything. Uh, uh, so when we turn to God's righteousness, if we put our minds to it, 
to being obedient. If, if we put our minds to doing what the Bible says, we'll find ourselves walking in perfection in Christ. Uh, we struggle with the lifestyle of holiness because we don't put our minds to it. And if your mind is not there, your mind is your heart. That's right. Okay. So where your treasure is. Your heart, right? your heart. So if you put your treasure in Christ, in heaven, your heart, you will be preoccupied with pleasing him. That's where you will be preoccupied with pleasing him. And so you won't have so many problems in this world. I don't care what nobody says. When you are saved, you shouldn't walk around being saved with a boatload of problems. All right, that's right. Mm -hmm. I didn't say stuff would work against you, but you have a different mind. Amen. It keeps me in perfect peace with my mind to stay on him. So why am I going to walk around complaining about stuff when I'm saved? Right. This world doesn't phase me, but I'm not going there tonight. What I want us to be concerned with is, and, and I have to encourage y'all tonight, Amen. to not be discouraged because you see folks who are out of Christ prospering in this life. Do not let the prosperity of the unbeliever or the hypocrite discourage your walk in Christ. In uh, the 73rd Psalm now the 73rd Psalm happens to be the first book, first psalm of the third book of Psalms. Uh, and, and the third book of Psalms is uh, labeled as the Leviticus book. And it, this book, this beginning with the 73rd Psalm, uh, it deals with concerning the sanctuary. Now, in our walk, we seek to dwell in God's holy sanctuary. Yeah. And I'm not talking about just this physical thing. This is God's sanctuary. But wherever you go, because your mind is stayed on Christ, you are always in his holy sanctuary. Uh, because he keeps you protected from the wiles of the devil. And so he, again, he keeps you in perfect peace sanctuary, because you keep your mind stayed on yeah. him. Amen. So, uh, uh, this 73rd Psalm, the third, the first Psalm of the third book uh, in the Psalms, uh, the Leviticus book, and in the chapter of uh, verse number one of the 73rd Psalm. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. No. Truly, God is good to Israel. God is good to his people. Even to such as are of a clean heart. And so, the first step in this walk is to walk with a clean, a clean heart. heart. Amen. You say you belong to God, but you are not of a clean heart. God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. So if one were of Israel, but was not of a clean heart, then they would not be included in the good. God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean or a pure heart. Uh -huh. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. See, listen. Uh, he's being honest here. And this is this song was written by Asaph. And, and Asaph is being very honest here. And he was a religious fellow. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. He was a devoted or, or devout uh, uh, Jew. He was committed to Judaism. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Now, in verse number one, he testifies that God is good to Israel, as such a, even to such as are of a clean heart. So he knew that God is good. 
So you got to be careful. You know that God is good, but you, you can know that God is good and still lose sight of the fact that God is good. You know, it's easier sometimes for us to see God being good to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. And we struggle God being good to us. Come on. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to prove it to you. Amen. You'll be home, be at work, whatever, be depressed. Somebody else come to you, call you, text you, whatever, with a problem. And you snap right to encouraging them. Girl, you can make it, man. You can do it. You can do this. You can do that. But wait a minute. But you all, your feet almost slipped. All right. All right. Yeah, all yeah. right. That's yes. true. Come on. You were about in tears. That's right. Yeah. You, you, about, you about to pass out. But somebody called you the problem. Now you snap to it. Child, you know God is able. He's a healer. Mm -hmm. Now your head to kill you all day long. Mm -hmm. But somebody called you. Somebody sick. Well, you know God's a healer. Okay, your feet. Oh, all right now, slipped. all right now. You forgot. You forgot. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped on. Uh -huh. Well, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So you got to understand who you're dealing with and keep your eyes on people. You cannot... You cannot measure how good God is to you by how good he seems to be to someone else. Mm -hmm. Come on. Remember now, he reigns on the just as well as, yeah. as, well as the unjust. Amen. See, you'll get confused because they're quote unquote blowing up. You think they're being blessed. Come on now. Because you're confused. First thing, mind your business. First thing, what, what happens to them is none of your business. All right. What they drive, where they live, how much money they have, who they hang with, who they know, is none of your business. You want to just get discouraged? Start minding somebody else's business. Oh, look at that car they drive. You don't know their story. All right, now. They're about to lose that car, but you don't even know that. All right, now. You're so stuck with your, your mouth and your nose and somebody else's business. And right you get now. discouraged, that stuff you don't even understand. That's right. Yeah. I don't care if they're, they're more top of your nails, guess what? It's still none of your, none of your business. business. All right now. You got to learn to mind your business. I right. was envious at the foolish. The only reason you're envious is because you're minding somebody else's business. business. Mind your business. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, how do you know they prosper? Your mind in there. Business. We're going to be looking at the perfect man. Amen. Looking at the woman who wants to live holy. Amen. Not the one who seems to be prospering in this world, mm -hmm. but the one whose lifestyle reflects Christ. But we get we, we give more attention to people's material things than we do to, to, to the spirit that's in them. Oh, I tell you, they look at that. Oh, that's a nice suit. That's some nice shoes. What about what, what the spirit in that joker? Right now. That's, that's right. Amen. That's Come on. So you minding the wrong thing. Yes, Lord. You're trying to see, you're trying to identify God through material things. Yeah, yeah. Impossible. Won't work. That's right. Impossible. Mm -hmm. You have to see the spirit. We are not wrestling against the flesh. And blood. Yes, yes, that's right. Come on. So don't be so impressed with flesh Amen. and blood. Oh, Four. Amen. But there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Uh, there are no bands in their death, no pain in their death, but their strength is firm. Now, understand, their strength is firm, and let's bring it to today. When you have good health care, you have good doctors, you have a good plan, you have good prescription plan, uh, you may be going through serious illness, but because you have good insurance, mm -hmm. you don't suffer like the poor person with the same disease, but just can't get any help. Yeah, if you could have gone to the doctor two years ago, they probably would have caught that cancer spot then. But you couldn't afford to go for whatever reason because your copay was $35 and you just didn't have it. And every time you thought you were going to go, you had to put it off because you couldn't afford to go. 
Uh -huh. But the rich one, the one who had the, the, the resources, the one who had the means, could go. Yeah, yeah. And so they had better health care. Huh? Yeah. That's right. And uh, the state of Alabama has one of the highest infant mortality rates in the country. Yeah. And the African American in Alabama has twice the mortality rate than does the Caucasian. The mortality rate is the number of, of, of dead births, stillbirths. So we, in 2012, we still have babies stillborn, all because there is not access to health care. Because that mother couldn't go, and, and sometimes it's not access, sometimes it's not knowledge. Don't have the information. Right. Because you are less sophisticated. You didn't know you could go down to the health center, to the women's center, whatever, and get some help. You didn't realize that you can go somewhere and ask somebody, and somebody point you in the right direction. Now that's a reflection of, of lack of sophistication. That's right. Okay, which is which is which is a direct correlation to the amount of income, the amount of money you have. Trust me when I tell you that. So the poorer you are, the less sophisticated you are. That's right. Y'all hear me? Amen. 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 And so uh, 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 you look at the rich person, oh, they died peacefully. Yeah. But the poor man had the same disease, mm -hmm. and he died in pain. Mm -hmm. He died crying and hurt, screaming, hollering. But the rich man, because he was sedated, mm -hmm. because he had the morphine, mm -hmm. because he was drugged, and he didn't experience the painful situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that's extreme, people die. But in, in our lives, we have problems, and we look at folks, and because they have means, they don't struggle with paying their bills. Right. But you're in pain because you can't afford to pay your bills. You've got to sit down, and you've got to calculate how you're going to steal from Peter to pay Paul this month, and, and you'll hit, it'll hit Paul next month and, and knock off Peter. Y'all, you see, that's when you're poor. When you're rich, you don't have that problem. That's right. Even the rich man who files for... Chapter 7, one of the football coaches, John L. Smith, an interim coach at uh, Arkansas, he filed for bankruptcy, about $27 million. Chapter 7. But he's not losing sleep at night. He still has a cushy bed to, to sleep in. Right. Donald Trump has filed for, for bank, bankruptcy numerous times. No big deal. It's just a function of how they do business. But when the poor man files for bankruptcy, he can barely pay the attorney to go and file the bankruptcy. Come on now. Man. Come on, man. <laughs> so he's in pain. Mm -hmm. Now, if he has his eyes on the rich man, he's going to be in more pain. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Huh? That's yep. right. But if he minds his business and learns the system, then his walk is not as difficult. But when you are in everybody else's business, Look at them. They got this guy. That's none of your business. That's right. Amen. I don't care what kind of drugs he's selling. That's none of your business. Yes, In terms of his prospering, how it affects your community is all your business. Mm -hmm. But how he's prospering, well, look at he's selling drugs. He's driving a nice car. That's none of your business. You get frustrated. You go sell you some drugs. Mm -hmm. Trying to get what he has. All right. Come on now. Find yourself going to prison, getting killed, all because you looking at what someone else has. Come on, come on, read on. Hmm. They are, verse five. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. I covered that. Come on. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Uh -huh. See now, pride and violence is their problem. Hmm. Pride. And uh, compasses them about as a chain. Looks like it's a necklace they're wearing. Uh. Pride. Yeah. That's why they can say things like, I ain't studying the poor. Mm -hmm. Well, 47% gonna vote for Obama anyway. Now, that's not a political statement, but it's a fact that when you have that perspective, when you, when you, when you write off almost half of the populace, that's pride. That means you're not concerned about people. So, uh, therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. And so these are people whose lifestyles are so into 
are so ungodly until they have become indifferent. Verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Uh, I think we would call them greedy dogs. That's right. Their heart stand out with fat. Now think about this. You take the rich man. He's got, he's got millions of dollars. You live in his little house, his little apartment, that you pay three, four, five, seven, depending on what part of the country you live in. You can say you pay $1,000. Now in the grand scheme of things, your little $1,000 means nothing to him. But doing business, he could care less about you or your personal story. He has one interest. The bottom line is M-O-N-E-Y. Mm -hmm. So, uh, people's stories mean nothing right. to him. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They just got their, 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 their bank accounts are running over. And here you are struggling trying to keep your water turned on. They could care less. Yeah. Pay or get out. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And let me go further. Some of these folks say they're saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Some of these folks in the church. Lord, we'll have a church, church, multi-million dollar complex. Mm -hmm. But you have folks in the church who can't pay their power bill. Church ain't stuck now. I got to put you through all kinds of changes for me to pay for the church, the prosperous paid church, to pay your $50 water bill just to keep your water on with you and your children in that house. And the pastor will blow $50 just on a few drinks. And he's not drinking soda and juice. Come on, come on now, come on, come on. Y'all understand? Yes, yes. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're so rich, consumed by their material possessions. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah, is. Have y'all seen that? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what? Ain't none of your business. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even though it's happening, it's none of your business. You, it's none of my business. How the other pastor prospers mm -hmm. is none of my business. Right. Yeah. What he drives is none of my business. Mm -hmm. Where he lives is none of my business. Right. Come on. See, this is where you become envious because you spend your time evaluating other people's lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't know what they've been through. Right. You can see a preacher in a multi-million dollar church Blowing up, but you don't know that before that church was built, he was rich. You don't know that. It's possible that most of the money was generated from him or through him. See? Right. So they built now, you criticize it all day long, and you can you, you can have an opinion about it. I mean, for me, you should feed the people instead of build a building. But it's none of my business. Mm -hmm. Ultimately. Understand? Then, the individual store is the it's none of my business. The platform is all of my business because God called me to this. Amen. Yeah. So I talk about the ungodly lifestyles, mm -hmm. but, to, but to, to focus on comparative blessings because I'm so preoccupied with what you're driving, where you live, what you're eating, what you're wearing, all of this, and I become discouraged. Mm -hmm. So now I'm not minding my own mm -hmm. business and I'm paying for it. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They couldn't even spend all that money. Yeah. Right. But that's none of my business. Right. Come on, verse 8. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. You understand? They're corrupt and they speak wickedly concerning oppression. Okay, simple, simply put it, just they stun you. Right. They could care less about you being oppressed. They don't care about your story. No. They don't care that your hand is about to fall off and you can't go see the doctor. Mm -hmm. No. No, there are, there are many, 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 many exceptions. Many. There are many, many folks who are rich who when they see somebody know you and you're in trouble, they will come to your rescue. Many. 
The problem with a lot of poor people, they can't receive the help because you go thinking they're supposed to help you. That's right. That's right. You go thinking they owe you something. Uh -huh. No one owes you anything. That's right. That's right. Y'all hear me? Amen. Amen. No one owes you anything. Mm -hmm. No. Then you go trying to play people. People don't try to play them. Don't go with, with your hidden agenda. Come on. That's right. That's right. Be honest. Mm -hmm. Be straightforward. That's right. If you know somebody's rich and you need, go and say, look, I'm in need. Mm -hmm. If they say, if they give it to you because they don't, don't be mad. That's right. That's because right. Because they owe you nothing. That's, nothing. that's right. Understand? Amen. You walk away frustrated and mad. Now, that's your spiritual price you're paying. Because mm -hmm. it's affecting you spiritually, not just naturally, but spiritually. Yeah, yeah. So here you are. You are in natural pain and in spiritual pain. That's right. Silly self. Mm -hmm. All because your mind is somebody else's business. Amen. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. I said, now, and again, every, everybody who's rich is not like that. There are a lot of very, very humble rich folks. You would never know they were rich. So we're not, we're not painting, trying to paint because somebody, there's no sin in being rich. It's not a sin. That's right. It's not a sin in having money. No, it's not. But I do say if you're saved, you can't be rich. Because you, you're preoccupied with blessing somebody else. I didn't say you're going to be poor. I didn't say you're going to be a beggar. But there's no way you can be saved and see people in pain and you got millions in the bank right. and you won't come to their rescue. That's the truth. I got a Bible for that. I'm not, that's not the that's lesson. Right. That's right. That. That's right. Now you tell the truth. Verse 9. Come on. Let me move on. They set their mouth against the heavens uh -huh. and their tongue walking through the earth. Hardy folks. Come on. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Okay, they set them out against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Now, this is a spirit in the church today, where the prosperous in this world, in the flesh, in the natural, they set their mouth against the heavens. Now, against the heavens, against, against God, against his righteousness, and so there is a compromised standard of living spiritually in the church because people have set their mouths against God, against holiness. And, and so uh, when you let down the standard of holiness, then guess what? More people come through. That's right. The duel. That's right. You're right now. But when you hold to the standard, you won't get as many travelers. Now turn, now turn to the book of Matthew. Amen. Chapter number 7. Amen. Verse number 13. Amen. Yes. Matthew. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in their acts. Now, they seek to widen. They seek to widen the gate. Yeah, come on. And to broaden the way. Mm -hmm. come on. That's what they do. Amen. Uh, because they need more folks. Yeah, yeah. And if the, if the way is straight. Come on. And the gate is narrow. Yes. Can't get as many folks in. That's right. Now understand now, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So let everything and everybody in we can get in, because we gotta get all we can yeah. get. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. And many there be which go in their act. Yeah. Psalm 73 and 9, they set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Huh? Amen. Verse number 10. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And so, because uh, uh, they deceive the people, the people always come back and bless them. Yeah. Hmm? Come on. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. Amen. Because they deceive the people, they tell the people what they want to hear. And the people always come back to bless them. Amen. But when you tell people what thus saith the Lord, then you become an unpopular voice. Yes. Lord have mercy. 
verse number 11, Psalm 73 and 11. And they say, how does God know? It is their knowledge in the most high. So we have people today, because they have so much money, and so much this and so much that, people would rather hear them than hear from God. Uh, that's the truth. And so they have convinced the people, the great majority of people, that I know better than God. And the reason I can prove I know better is because of how much money that I have. Because of the big church that I, that I passed. All right. Look at my fine vehicles. And so people are impressed by what they see with their natural eyes. Uh -huh. And say, they know better than God. Yeah. They have to know better. So when the, man, when the true man of God brings the truth to God, then that is, that is deemed to be incorrect to be ignorant, clueless, inaccurate, all because the true man of God yeah. is never lofty. He's never highfalutin. But the true man of God is always a humble spirit. Therefore, verse 10, his people return hither, and water of a full cup are run out to them. And they say, how doth he know? And is there knowledge in the most out of God, I'm sorry. And is there knowledge in the most high? And so today's church, people have taken to questioning and doubting God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. Uh, Enter ye at the straight gate, for where I this gate and brought it the way to lead to destruction, and many there be which go in there at. Verse 14. Amen. Because straight is the gate, uh -huh. and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Uh -huh. So because this way is uh, straight and the gate is narrow, so the, uh, the, the way is narrow uh, and the gate is straight, uh, uh, fewer people are involved. That's right. And folks love to follow the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when you preach and teach the truth of God, it's going to always be unpopular. Amen. Man. So there will be very few folks who are going to follow after this way. Yes. But everybody's looking for the man to follow. Mm -hmm. I didn't say for God. Looking for the man to follow. Come on. That's why when we go to church today, when you say Jesus, come on, give God praise, people act like they're dead. Yeah. But when you call the preacher's name, All right now. everything comes alive. Yep, that's People right. are whistling and throwing hankies and all of these things. Mm -hmm. Because man's nature is to worship man. Right. Because our nature is idolatrous. Uh -huh. And so we need we need a something to worship. Mm -hmm. Something we can see with our natural eyes. And so today's world, that is a man. And so the church today follows a man. Forget about the God in him. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But we choose to follow a man. Doesn't matter how filthy his lifestyle is. All right, that's right. But because he wears a nice suit, because he can quote unquote preach now, what we call preaching, not really preaching, but our style, because yeah. he can move and all that, and he knows how to walk the benches and kick his shoes off and run around the church and, and get tuned up and ah, and, 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 ooh, he sure can't preach. Tell the mm -hmm. truth. A man who preaches against sin is never a popular preacher. That's right. Because people don't want to, do not want to hear a message that condemns sin. That's right. Tell the truth. Y'all hear me? Amen. If my phone started ringing off the hook to come preach, mm -hmm. then I know I'm changed what I preach. Come on. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. It'll ring off the hook for prayer. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. <laughs> People will call me for counsel, yeah. which I don't counsel. Mm -hmm. But they'll call me for that. For that. Mm -hmm. They'll call me for prayer. They'll call me. Mm -hmm. But they won't call me to preach. No. Because when your message is one of righteousness, yeah, yeah. it is unpopular. Y'all yeah, hear me? Amen. Right, let's go back to uh, uh, the 73rd Psalm. Uh, verse number 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Uh, no, these are the ungodly. They prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Y'all read that? Amen. All right, now, 
Let's go down to verse number, Matthew 7, verse number 15. Amen. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now, you've got to beware. They look like the people of God. Yeah. See, but you're confused because you're looking at the outward man. Thinking they look good because because you got a, a expensive clothes on, it must be a blessing from God. But what about Lazarus the beggar? Oh. Come, on. Come, on. Come on, that's right. And the rich man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying we should look raggedy, y'all. Mm -hmm. We should look prosperous. But you can't. You cannot confuse material prosperity with godliness. Verse 15. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Now you're going to know them by their fruits. You watch. You're going to know them by what they do mm -hmm. and by what comes from them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you look at a church and the people are low down, mm -hmm. you know how the pastor is. That's right. Y'all hear me? Amen. If you see a church, it's a messy church. They've got a messy pastor. Yeah. By their fruits, you shall know them. Yeah. You know what comes from them, and you watch what they do. And the product is the point. A righteous man produces righteous fruit. Yeah, that's right. Come on, read uh, 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 17. Amen. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. All right. Good tree, good fruit. fruit. Corrupt tree, evil fruit. Amen. Uh -huh. 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Wait, 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 wait. A good tree cannot right. bring A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Amen. Did it say won't? Mm -hmm. It cannot. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Uh-huh. Amen. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Mm -hmm. By their fruit. Go keep reading. 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, don't you worry about that tree being hewn down. That's God's business. All right. Remember now, mind your business. Mind your yeah. business. Don't ever pray for somebody else to fall. Yes. yes. Don't ever pray for that. I don't care who they are, how evil they are. Don't ever pray evil against anyone. Amen. 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 Yes. Don't ever, ever have evil in your heart against anyone. Yeah. I don't care who they are, what they have, what they don't have, what they've done to you, what they said about you. Do not pray nor wish evil against anyone. If you do, then you have rid of yourself a sinner. Mm. Amen. Y'all hear me? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mind your business. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. How? By their fruits. You're going to know them by their fruits? Amen. Uh -huh. Not by their material blessings. No. What comes is what's inside. Amen. Oh, he looks like a sheep, but he's a revenue wolf. Yeah, yeah. You're too blind to see, because you're caught up on the outside. Come on. Instead of saying, you know, uh, Marvin Sapp had a song, he saw the best in me, mm -hmm. and everyone else around only see the worst, right? Mm -hmm. But remember this, he also sees the worst in him, mm -hmm. <laughs> when everyone else sees the best. Uh -huh. Oh, God sees the worst. Come on. A lot of folks, people see the best, mm -hmm. but God sees the worst. Yeah. God sees the true story. Mm -hmm. But don't you worry about it as none of your business. Come on, worry about anybody else. You take, you, you, you take care of your business. Yeah. Yes. 13. Verily I have cleansed my heart. I'm sorry, Psalm 73, 13. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in the innocency. All the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. Looking at those who prosper in this world. And you get to feeling sorry for yourself. Man, why am I living hope? Why am I living all this? Because you're better. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. 
Tell the truth. Yeah. Put your eyes on somebody else and discourage you from living holy. But I ain't no sense of me living safe at all. All I do is suffer. Yeah, come on. And uh -huh. oh, so now you have a pity party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm had this. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So, so you're going to give up on God because of what you don't have. Know why you don't have what you need or what you think you should have? Because your attitude. Hmm. <laughs> you just you just reveal who and what you are. Well, I'm just gonna give up. I I'm, I'm just that's that's why you're struggling because of your mentality, huh? Amen. You forgot the Bible says in everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of the pastor. Of God. God. Mama. God. God. Of Daddy. God. Of my husband. God. Of my own wife. God. Of my children. God. Oh, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Concerning you. Amen. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been playing and chasing every morning. Man, I, I, here I am trying to do right. All I'm doing is going through. Verse 15. Amen. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Uh huh. So, uh, what I'm not going to do is I am not going to destroy be dishonest uh, with the people of God with the children of God by, by speaking a deceiving word so if I say I will speak thus if I say I will speak those things I should offend against the generation of thy children so what I won't do I'm not going to cleanse my hand in vain I'm going to keep oh, stop cleansing my hand I'm going to keep cleansing uh, my hand huh I'm still going to allow myself to be chastened by the word or through the word of God. Verse 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Uh -huh. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Now, see, you've got to get into the sanctuary of God. All of the trials, all of the tests, all of the changes that I'm going through until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Mm -hmm. Because when you go into the sanctuary of God, there's one thing in God's sanctuary. It's called truth. <laughs> And it helps you to better think, to discern between the righteous and unrighteous, between right and wrong. So you begin to understand through God's sanctuary, dwelling in his sanctuary, that the life that I'm living in Christ pays off in the end. It is what pays holy, godly, sanctified, glorious dividends. Amen. Oh, you forgot. The word says that the way of the transgressor is hard. Yeah. So I'm looking at the transgressor, none of my business. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be a transgressor. Come on. Uh, that's a miserable lifestyle. Folks, one moment they want Jesus, the next moment they're practicing the devil's business. That's a hard lifestyle. When you're committed to the righteousness of God, you never struggle. No, 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 no in between. You just stay on that road. It's straight and it's narrow. It's straight and it's narrow. No confusion. You just keep walking. Well, you can just keep walking. I'm on the road. I'm on the road. See? That's the faith walk. Yes. I'm not worried about it. God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yes, Lord. As I'm walking, there's a table on that road. Amen. God prepared for me. He gives me a break. Respite. That's what he gives me. He gives me some rest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. See? But when you get confused, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I in their end. 18. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. I tell you, listen, you got to be careful when you step. Mm -hmm. They thought they were they thought they were balling. But slippery places. Still none of your business. Uh-huh. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? 
They are utterly consumed with terror. See, that looks good right now, but you know what? It'll fall apart quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because there is no foundation in God. I don't care how good it looks. There's no foundation in God. Now turn back over to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7. Verse number 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. No. People are saying, Lord, Lord, but they won't enter the kingdom. Yes. Hmm? Amen. Now, the reason they won't enter the kingdom is because their hearts are not sincere. Yeah. A lot of folks saying, Lord, Lord, but they don't mean it. <laughs> Lord, I love you. Not for real, though. Not for real, though. No. Amen. By their fruits. You shall know them. 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In whose name? The name of Jesus. Uh-huh. And in thy name have cast out devils. Uh-huh. And in that name, done many wonderful works. Now, we did, we, 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 we cast out devils. We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We did many wonderful works in your name. They asked him a question. Lord, let me do this. Now, what do you say? 23. And then when I profess unto them, uh -huh. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Wait a minute now. You mean to tell me they prophesied in his name, they cast out devils in his name, and yes. did many yes, wonderful books in his name? Yes, they did. And they were still sent to the lake of fire? Yes, yes. they were. Amen. Yes. Oh. That's why the folks don't be so impressed because somebody had a, a, worked a miracle. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a man of God. He prophesied it came to pass. Why are you so impressed with that? Come on. Prophecy shall, shall cease. Yes, they will. Why are you so impressed with that? Oh, and I tell you, she laid hands on me and I was healed. Okay, and then you're going to say we did all these things in your name. Now, the point is they did them in his name. Mm -hmm. And these things came to pass. Mm -hmm. But, and then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, the whole, the whole problem is the reason you do not understand what a work of iniquity is. See? So the one who works iniquity goes against God's will and includes others in the deception. That's right. Yeah. Huh? Amen. So they weren't doing these things because they loved the Lord. They were doing these things because they were trying to impress people. And man, if I can say, well, what, what good is it for me to stand here talking about your birthdays this day, your names? This? So what? Mm -hmm. Come on. They make people impressed with me because I can tell your, your birthday because I can give you a prophecy. Well, so can the palm reader. Come on. Amen. Tell the truth. Sure can. Oh, Lord. So can Madam Joanne on the side of the road. Stop. Let her read the tarot cards for you. Yes, oh, you don't think they can do it? Yes, sure can. Yes, yes, can. Yes, yes, yes. What about the woman at Endor? Yeah. She brought up the spirit of the dead prophet Samuel. Yes, yeah. For real. She wasn't of God. She was a witch. Right. What about the young damsel in Acts chapter 16? What about Simon of Source in Acts chapter 8, I believe it is? What about them? What about the magicians when, 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 when Moses threw down the staff and guess what? All theirs turned to serpents too. Yeah. When Moses performed miracles, they came back and performed miracles too. What about them? They were not godly, but they did things. You cannot be so impressed with what people do. Amen. See, you got to learn to mind the business. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. I know Brother God laid hands on you and you were healed. I shouldn't be worshiped about that. Yeah, come on. Because I didn't do what God did. Yes, Lord. Come on. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Now, if I allow you to praise me for doing it, and there's one thing I acknowledge, another thing to praise it. Thank God. You want to be healed? Let them, if that sister right there has a gift of healing. She has to get laying on the hands. And if she lay hands on you, you're going to be here right now. Because somebody needs to know that they're sick. Mm -hmm. So they need to know that. But we don't come worshiping the person. Amen. So when I allow you to worship me, now I'm treading on God's territory. Y'all following me? Amen. Amen. So now it's, it's no longer about God. Now it's about me. Because I want to hear my name called. Mm -hmm. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them that I touch you. See, when you hear, when you hear that stuff, did I, do I know you? Did I tell you the truth? That's not godly. <laughs> Amen. 
Well, what we know what that's missing. What verse we at? Uh, uh, 24. Go ahead. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Let's start right there. Let's go back to, to uh, Psalm 73. Uh, verse number 18 again. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou casted them down into destruction. Keep going. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. All right, now let's go back to Matthew, chapter number 7. Therefore, whosoever hear these things, these things of mine and do with them, I will liken them unto a wise man who put his house upon a rock. And the rain is... Uh, Descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Amen. That's the one that stands on the truth of God. 26. And everyone that heareth these things of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Right, and so as uh, hard Surely thou didst, uh, Psalm 73, 18, surely thou didst set them in slippery places, uh, cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in the moment, they are utterly just consumed with terrors because they did not build on a rock. When you build, and for us, for the church, the rock we build on, his name is Jesus. Jesus. Amen. He is our solid yes. foundation. Yes, Lord. He is our holiness. He is our righteousness. He is our faith. Yes. He is our truth. Yes. Amen. Oh, yeah. So everything we do, we build it on Jesus. Amen. Whatever you do in word or in deed, you do it all in the name of Jesus. Yes, As a dream, when one awaketh, so, O oh Lord, when thou wakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was a beast before thee. Why? All because I was not minding my business. My business. That's right. Business. That's right. Looking at other folks Amen. and seeing how they are prospering. Amen. He ain't doing right. He getting stuck. She ain't doing right. She getting stuck. It's not your business. Yeah, yeah. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and after receive me into glory. Now, I almost, I almost slipped. Mm -hmm. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps said, well, now I slipped. Almost. Almost. Ain't bad enough. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm still standing. Still standing. Yeah, I may very well have looked into my neighbor's artist, and all they do is cuss, smoke, drink, act a fool. They got everything. Mm -hmm. They got more than we have. None of my business. Keep your eyes in your yard. Yeah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank God for what you have. Yes, right. Amen. Thank God for the little car you have. It may be breaking down some, but thank God you have a car. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. How can God bless you with a good and when you won't get God in praise for the bad? That's, That's right. right. Amen. 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 Huh? That's Amen. right. So we thank God in spite of our yeah. problems. Yes, yes, Lord. That's yes. right. Not looking at other people. Yes. Yes. Keep the eyes, mind, stayed on Jesus. Yes. Amen. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith. faith. Hallelujah. Without him, we could do absolutely nothing. nothing. Amen. So we're not concerned about the enemy. Not concerned about those who are against us. Not concerned about those who are not living righteously. We will not allow them to affect our walk in Christ. Yes, Lord. The songwriter wrote, my, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame for holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep your eyes stayed on Jesus. Paul wrote, forgetting those things which are behind. behind. Yes, Lord. Look at those things which are before us. I press toward the mark for the prize 
of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I ain't studying nobody else. I'm not studying your job. I'm not trying to judge where you are in Christ. I'm going to preach and teach the truth. Right. That's right. I'm not going to stop telling the truth. Amen. But my eyes not on you. And sometimes folks, you know, you get too arrogant. You think I'm preaching against you. I ain't studying you. Tell the truth. <laughs> you're not even my thoughts. I'm like throwing off. Throwing off on who? You're not, you're not even, you're not even a thought. I, I've given you no consideration. But when the word finds you, then you get right. So the next time God comes your way, you are not there. That's right. For as long as you keep your eyes on everybody else, you won't stay in the same place. Frustrated, disgusted, mad, depressed. Sitting around wishing even other folks don't even know it. God, I wish you would do them. Wait a minute, hold on. So what you can, so your prophecy can come to pass. God gonna get them. Well, wait, oh, oh, oh. See, when you know the word of God, a true man of God in this Bible never wish harm on the people. When God wants to do the people, Moses said, No, God, do me. True man of God. Let, let me suffer, Lord. Don't let the people suffer. See, you have to have the heart of God. Regardless of what they did, when, when they stoned Stephen, they stoned Stephen because Stephen was preaching Jesus. Stephen died saying, God, lay not this sin to their charge. But you got to have the spirit of God. When you don't know, then you do all kinds of evil things. You have all kinds of evil thoughts. Get them, God. Make them suffer. Mess with me. Wait a minute. You don't have the spirit of God. God can't fight for you because you have a fleshly mind. One scripture says he'll make your enemy your footstool. But I like the one that says he'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. Yes, yes. I don't want my enemies to be my foot. I just don't want my enemies to be my footstool. I want my enemies to be at peace with me. I want my enemies to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. Thank you, Lord. That's right. That's right. I don't want to step on anyone. Amen. I don't want to get up a testimony where against me and I look at them now. Whoa, 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 whoa. They thought he, there are a lot of folks who, who, who talked against me and still do. I'm not going to bask in the fact that they suffer things. God, I want you to change their hearts and change their minds. Protect right. them. Amen. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Amen. Amen. So we can be at peace. But you've got to have the mind of Christ. And that comes with keeping your eyes stayed on Jesus. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Get your eyes, get your mind off other folks. Get your business out of other, get your nose out of other folks' business. Mind your own business. Yes, Lord. And find the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And the sanctuary is Christ. It's that place where your faith is in Christ. Then you are unaffected by all of the adversities that are in your life. Now, you can't be frustrated or discouraged because your faith keeps you in that place yeah. of peace. Mm. Amen. So you never contemplate going back, looking back, turning around, giving up. No, my mind is on Jesus. Right. I know you look at me, you think I'm toe down, po, ain't got nothing, don't know nothing. But man, my mind is on Jesus. And why are you criticizing me? All I'm doing is giving him praise. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Now, top that. So then you never walk around frustrated. Because your mind is stayed on Jesus. Never worry about anybody else in terms of the evil they're doing. If they're hungry, you feed them. If they're naked, you clothe them. If they're homeless, you provide shelter. But other than that, you don't worry about it. They're sick, you pray for them, go visit them, do what you can for people. But never, ever, ever be envious because someone else is blessed, or at least you think they're blessed. Amen. Sometimes what you perceive as a blessing is actually their curse. But it's none of your business. But you'll get in trouble trying to evaluate who and what they are, what they should be, what they have, what they shouldn't have, what they want. It's none of your business. You just give God thanks. And watch God prosper you because you're so caught up in giving him thanks. You forgot about your problem. Amen. Problem, problem didn't go away. You just forgot about it. Because you started giving God thanks. Huh? 
So in between, in between uh, 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 your power being shut off on Friday and you get your little check on Wednesday, from between those days, all you did was give God thanks. You forgot your powers off. Wednesday, you got your money. Power came back on. But you weren't frustrated from Friday to Wednesday because your mind was stayed on Jesus. Amen. Come right. on, give God praise. Hallelujah.